I went on Google and I typed in, what does the Bible say about? And the first response that Google filled in for me was suicide. Suicide is a trending topic and people want to know, what does God's word have to say about it? So in this video, I want to talk about seven lies that the enemy wants to try to convince you of and then seven things that the Bible says to people who are struggling with thoughts of suicide. And there's a number of different people who struggle with suicide in the Bible. We got King Saul. This guy actually in 1 Samuel 31, he fell on his own sword. He chose to end his life rather than face abuse by his captors. But we have the armor bearer to Saul who uh, in his own desperation and, and hopelessness and terror immediately after killed himself. Then there's Samson, right at the end of his life, it's that famous scene, right, where he pushes against the pillars, every, the, 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 the temple falls down on top of him and everybody in that. And you got Abimelech, who is this king over Israel, but he was like this ruthless and cruel guy. A woman dropped a huge stone out of a building and injured him, and rather than being taken down by a woman, uh, his pride was injured so much he killed himself. Then there's Ahithophel, who is this one-time companion of King David. Well, finally David stopped going to him to ask for wisdom, and in his shame, he was like, I would rather end my life because of the shame of, of being overlooked. Then there was Zimri. He was this evil king of Israel. He was about to face defeat, and he saw no way out except to take his own life. Zimri... Uh, set his own palace on fire and died within it. And this is in 1 Kings 16. And finally, there's Judas. In, in the shame and in the overwhelming guilt of betraying the sinless Son of God, went out and he hanged himself. And we read about this in Matthew 27. Here are seven things that Satan wants to convince you of when it comes to ending your own life. First lie is that People are better off without me. And if that's the case, then why don't I just leave the picture? The second lie is, man, nobody cares about me anyways. I'm, I'm all alone. The third lie is, I just can't face this pain anymore. The struggle is too hard. The fourth lie is, I've lost all hope and I just can't go on. The fifth lie is, man, I'm gonna show them how much they hurt me. The sixth lie is, I, I've messed up everything. My life is useless. My life is a mess. And the seventh lie is, maybe, maybe just maybe I'll be more remembered in my death than in my life. Maybe I'll have more value once I'm actually dead. These are seven lies that I think the enemy is gonna try to convince people of in fact, truth is never dictated about how we feel or even based on our circumstances. Truth is something that is eternal and we can choose to walk in the truth. So here are seven truths for somebody to cling to while they're wrestling with suicide. This is what the Bible says. The first truth comes from John chapter 10, verse 10. And basically it's that we have to recognize that we have a real enemy whose mission is to steal and kill and destroy us. Look, it says this, the thief, Jesus is talking about Satan, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But here's the brilliant truth. Jesus has come. Jesus is alive in your life today that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. The second truth uh, is that we can actually choose not to be driven by fear. We don't have to be overcome by fear. And, and I find this truth from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I want to encourage you, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody if you're struggling with something. God will never let you go, and he will always provide a way of hope for you. You don't have to be overcome by fear because God is near. The third truth, and really believe this, you are never alone. You are not alone. I love what Psalm 34 says in verses 18 and 19. It says this, The Lord 
is near to the brokenhearted. Are you, are you brokenhearted? Are you crushed in spirit? Are you despairing? Are, are you finding yourself having a hard time holding on to hope? Listen to this. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Lord is near. You are never truly alone. The fourth truth is that God is near. He loves you, and he will sustain you. He will help you get through this. Like you, you don't have to be helpless. The Lord will sustain you. I, I love what David said in Psalm 55, and and we're reading so many of these psalms because this is a guy who, who wrestled with thoughts of despairing for his own life, of his own end of his life. And where he found his hope was the hope that is available to you and me. Psalm 55 says this, verse 22, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. God will sustain you through your greatest burdens. Give them to him. Run to him. Trust him. The fifth truth comes from Romans chapter 8. God will never condemn you or accuse you. If you've truly put your faith and your trust in Jesus, this is the Bible's promise to you. That there is therefore no more condemnation. Check it out. There is therefore, this is Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you feeling guilty? Are you, are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling full of shame that you are deserving of condemnation, that you are deserving of accusation? What you are feeling that for has already been paid for by Christ Jesus. So Paul can say, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You don't have to walk around with accusation or with shame or with guilt hanging over your head, with despair, with fear, with overwhelming thoughts of, um, of ending it all. You no longer have to do that because you're free. All of that has been paid for. The sixth reminder that the Bible gives to us is that we can always have hope in a brighter future. That God has a good plan in store. We move later on in Romans chapter 8, same chapter, and Paul says in verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to we know that all things work together. And this is a guy who's not speaking out of a rosy, easy life. This is a guy who's speaking from a life full of imprisonment and running from the police and being chased down and hunted because of his faith, which eventually got him killed. But in all of that, all of the despair of his own life, all of the, the fear of other people's opinions, all of the thoughts of struggle internally wrestling with how um, compromised morally he felt at times. Check out Romans 7 if you doubt that Paul felt like that. Even in the middle of all of that, Paul said, man, all of this is going to work together for the good of those who are called according to God's purpose. Is God working in your life? Has he worked in your life in the past? He has not given up on you yet. You ever feel like you're on the verge of giving up? Like you're on the, the brink of just throwing in the towel? The final truth that I want to remind you from God's word is that God is holding you together. Like in Jesus Christ, you are being held together. It's not any longer about how long you can last without throwing in the towel. It's no longer about how strong you are to hold yourself together. If you follow Jesus, if you put your trust in him, then Jesus himself is holding you together. Check out what Colossians chapter 1, verse uh, seven, 16 and 17 says. For by Jesus all things were created in heaven and on earth, 
visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. You are not going to fall apart because Jesus himself is holding you together. I hope you find hope in that. I hope you find comfort in that. That, that you can hold together. That you can keep going. That it's going to get better. That things are going to work out for good. That you are not living under the weight of accusation, under the weight of hopelessness. That, that despair is alive because hope is alive in Jesus. And he's actively working in your world. And he's bringing you through this to the other side. Thanks for checking this out. We are praying for you, and we hope that this starts an amazing conversation with some of the people around you and with us. So as always, feel free to drop us some comments below, and we'd love to connect with you about these things that the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm.